Hey everyone, Cream Ray here, and today I have Troy Meningo on with us. Troy, how's it going? Going well, I can't complain. Um, I have a gym session later, but other than that, it's kind of a chill day for me. Nice, so where are you right now? Um, right now, I'm in Northern Virginia. I live in Chantilly, Virginia, and it's about like 30 minutes outside of DC. Got it, so you know, you just mentioned you came back from Africa, how was that? Africa was amazing, uh, had lots of great food. When I was out there, I played a few pickup games with some of the locals. Uh, I saw lots of my family. It was just a great time. What part of Africa was it? Congo. Um, there's actually two Congos, the Democratic Republic, but I'm from the Republic of Congo. And it's like Western Central Africa. Got it. So like, you know, for I haven't been there myself, but like for the viewers, can you like paint a picture of like what it looks like, what it's like over there? Um, yeah, I can try. It's kind of, it's definitely different. Um, there are lots of potholes. It's kind of like villages. So there would, of course, there are like building structures with brick and stuff because it rains a lot. But other than that, you're not going to find like a McDonald's or like a Chick-fil-A or like a, a fast food restaurant. There's lots of restaurants in uh, Point Noir, where I was, it's near the Atlantic Ocean. So there's lots of fish and like the fish was amazing. You had salt fish and a bunch of different dishes. Nice. All right, so let's dive into it. Troy, how, how did you get in, involved into the beautiful game, right? All right. Um, I would have to say my older brother was my main inspiration because I started playing football when I was like two years old. Um, I just kind of transitioned into my preschool team and then I went and then I got into club. And this is when I was growing up in Texas. And then I moved to Virginia four years ago, like the start of my freshman year in high school. And ever since then, I've just gone to DC United Academy until I got signed to Loudoun United. So at what age did you get, did you move to DC United? Um, freshman year of high school. So I think like 13 or four, yeah, 13 ish, I think. So, so from 13, you, so you started at 13 years old and then at what age, what, what age did you uh, leave DC? Um, I graduated out of DC United because they only go up to U18. So, that was this previous season, or like uh, 2021, June of 2021. That's when I I did my trial with DC United's first team. And then a few weeks after that, I was with Loudoun United. I got signed to Loudoun United, but uh, I didn't make my debut, unfortunately. I was just there training, stacking. So this season, I'm very excited. I have a lot to give for the team. Absolutely. So you were there from like 13 to 18. You had a trial with the first team. Um, so obviously you're working towards your goal to going pro. The first thing I want to tap into is that, you know, you, you had an experience that not a lot of players get to, right? You have to be at a certain level. Um, obviously, you fitted that cri criteria to be playing with DC United uh, from the age of 13 to 18. How was your experience playing at this club? It was really like a beautiful experience. Um, when I moved, I didn't really have many like friends, of course, because I left all my friends in Texas. And so like my one true passion really was football. And I think I kind of like leaned into it. And then it just helped me grow as an individual. Of course, it was rough when I started. Oh my gosh, I remember my first game at the academy. I made a terrible mistake and we were tied 4-4 uh, and then we ended up losing 5-4. And I thought like I would never bounce back. But I mean, of course, that was just my first year. And then I just started improving. And then sophomore year in high school, I was still at the academy. Then junior year and senior year, that's when I was like captain and co-captain. Yeah, and then I graduated out of that. Nice. So, you know, you obviously you have to be disciplined. What things would you share with players like that, you know, that want to be in your position that um, at DC United, what things would you share with them? Do you have to be disciplined? Do you have to eat, right? Like what things you got to do to be in that position to be playing with DC United's guy? 
Um, yeah, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, I feel like it's like what everyone hears. Go to sleep at a proper time, of course. Like, don't stay up too late. Uh, especially if you have a game the next day. Eat proper nutrition. Don't just eat snacks all day. Don't play video games for too long. Go out, get exercise. Um, and really just like that hard work and like that actual drive. Like, instead of thinking, ah, uh, maybe you can go out with your friends and hang out with that or not. If you like hit the field, that time that you're at the field, you're obviously improving. And like, I mean, it's just gonna help you instead of you try to follow your friends too much. Cause not everybody has your best interest at heart. Even if they don't see it like that, at the end of the day, it's your life. You have to, you have responsibility to take like control over it and change how you want it. Absolutely, great point. So you mentioned that it was hard to make that transition from Texas to Virginia. Uh, what advice would you share there, right? Because you, you know, you've been living in Virginia for four years now, so you're able to handle it. What advice would you give to young players that may come across the same experience as you? Um, I mean, really, I think it was just like a growth period within myself, for real. Like, you just have to become more independent. Like, you don't really need to rely on other people that much. Like, of course, it's nice to have friends, and I still talk with my friends and keep up with them and such. And I've made friends here, of course. But like, yeah, at the end of the day, it's your life. You gotta, you gotta step up and adjust. Absolutely. So, okay, boom. So you're 18 now, graduated from DC United. Where are you now? Okay, so now um, I actually graduated high school early. I was doing it virtual. Um, I graduated December 10th of 2021. And so with my extra time, I've just been working out, um, hitting the field. Uh, I mean, I've been seeing friends and such, but I'm gonna get like a, a job in the afternoon because we practice early mornings. So I think I'll just be working and kind of accumulating money in my free time, basically, yeah. Got it. And what, what club did you mention the club that you're playing with right now? I'm currently playing with the USL club, Louder United. Um, they're a pretty local team for us in Virginia. Uh, I think we're new, like three years. Yeah, this is our third year or fourth year. Got it. And what league do they play in right now? The USL. Uh, that's the second division of football in the United States. Yeah, but there's US, which, which USL? There's USL 2, USL 1, or USL Championship? USL Championship. Nice. So. You, you mentioned, you know, you're still working towards your pro. You mentioned that you're still working towards your pro contract right now. How do you plan to sign that first professional contract? Hmm. Well, I mean, I've been, I haven't committed to college yet, but I think I'm going to end up going the college route instead of like signing um, prior. Yeah, and so I think I would stay in college and then hopefully I would get a Generation Adidas contract and which is like the top 10 players uh, in like the NCAA, the NCAA. They, um, they get like, I don't know, Generation Adidas directly give them like benefits. And I would want to challenge myself to become at least the top 10 in the nation. Because ideally I'd like to sign overseas. Um, France or Germany would be my top destinations. But if I end up staying here in the United States and playing through the MLS, then I would definitely want to sign a generation Adidas contract. Got it. I want to congratulate you on your, your early graduation. That's nice. Um, and it's exciting. I want you to be speaking what you want into existence. This is the platform, our podcast, One Soccer Nation. So what we do is interview pros. So eventually, you know, you're, you're going to be a pro. So that's why we're having you on and we're excited for you. So, um, 18 now you want to go to college and then pursue your career through that route do you know what college you want to go to yet mm, i do have one college on like the top of my mind i have offers from like other colleges and such but jmu ideally if i could go there and i think that would be a great place for me to continue as a player and then i'm also not too far away from my mom she's still here in virginia Yeah, I would say it would have to be JMU. Got it. So, like, have you looked into the school yet? Um, have you looked at the program that you want to, 
be in to study mm-hmm. and those things yet? Um, yeah, I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to talk about this, but I've been talking with the uh, JMU coach uh, often, and actually I think I have a phone call with them in, in a couple of days, Friday, this Friday. Okay, got it. Yeah, we don't need to share any specific details. Can we share with uh, you know players that possibly might want to pursue the college route? What advice would you give to them to you know how to pick a school on how to pick a a, a, a study that you want to a program that you want to study in? What would you say? Um, well, to be honest, uh, I like it was or the college route was my last case scenario, scenario kind of like backup plan. I wanted to ideally go overseas as soon as possible, but I'm already 18 senior year. And I could pick a gap year, but um, I would just say, make sure to watch like the NCAA tournaments. I used to not really watch them like that, not even just tournaments, but all the games and kind of get a team that you feel you would be able to fit the play style and to really be able to like broadcast yourself because it's don't necessarily think about it as you're going to be there for four years unless you want to be at that college for four years until you graduate but like just think of it as like a showcase so that you can take yourself to the next level right got it so okay so you're communicating with a coach what i never asked you this but what position do you play i play center back um, I prefer left center back, but it doesn't really matter which side I play on. Nice. You got you got to be pretty tall and, and pretty big for that position. How tall are you? Uh, I'm six foot four. Got it. Nice. So playing in a center back position, I've only like played it once, right? So, um, and I just found it very difficult. It wasn't my position. Plus, I don't fit the, the criteria for that position. But <laughs> you, you're six four. Um, was that a position that you always played? Yeah. Um, I've pretty much always been defense. Um, when I was younger, we would play like, I think it was like 5v5s or whatever, like 9v9. We didn't really have center back, so I'd be outside back, but I've always been on defense. And then there was one year where I played, I joined a new club in Texas called Lone Star, and uh, they put me at striker just because like I was tall and fast, really, but I was a terrible striker. And then our center back got injured, and then coach was asking anybody to play center back and I, was, I can play center back and he looked at me kind of weird but like that was my position I just never really I don't know I feel like I told him but maybe not <laughs> and then I played well there and then ever since then I've just been center back since nice so you know that's that's pretty interesting so you said that you played striker and that wasn't your position but center back's your position so how do you like how'd you become good at playing center back? And what do you like about playing center back? Mm. Okay, center back, I think it's very like, I like the contact and um, I think it's very physical. And then also there's so many like great talents, like strikers, wingers, and midfielders that you play up against and you'll really have to like test yourself, whether they like run past you, you gotta get back. Also, I feel like I'm very dominant, like aerially, and I win a lot of headers and such. Um, also, I think it's kind of just like it's a step back from the game because I think I wouldn't, I would not be successful if I played eight or like attacking midfield because I think I'm, I'm like a little bit too slow with my feet and I would probably lose the ball a lot. But being back at center back, of course, I need to get my feet better and everything. That's what I'm training for, but being at center back, I think it kind of gives me like a better visual and I get to like scan the field, understand what's going on. And I think I'm very, I don't know what the word is, but like I communicate a lot. Mm. So I know a lot of good center backs, since they have the view, you're supposed to like talk to your team and such, your teammates and let them know what's going on. That's a good point. I was going to ask you if, if you're a good communicator because in that center back position, you get to see a field at a good perspective, at a good view. So like, where does that come from? Does that come from your personality or did you gain that from on the field? Um, I would say it came from my personality, but like when I was trialing with the first team, that was my, really my first time being in like a professional environment. And so I was kind of scared because like, I didn't want to like, I mean, not scared, but 
I just, it didn't feel right to yell at them, like call them by their first name or something. Like I would say, Mr. I would call them sir and such. But of course I was there for like two to three weeks. So I would have to learn to just be able to communicate them with us, like teammates working towards a common goal. And it's the same with Loudon really, because most of my teammates are adults. Yeah, let's tap into a little bit about that, that experience with the first team, right? Not a lot of players get to experience that whatsoever. So like, you know, that, that, that was a great experience that you just shared with us so that, you know, you didn't feel comfortable saying their first name because obviously these are older guys. These are grown men with like families, so on and so yeah. forth. But so how'd you like, how long did you train with them? I trained with them for two or three weeks. I think three weeks. So three, okay, so you trained with them three weeks and then like, you know, how long did it take you to adapt? Were you able to adapt or, you know, were you always uncomfortable throughout the whole three weeks? No, I honestly think I played so poorly. Like, it was definitely a great learning experience, but whenever I just think back on that, it's just, I mean, it's not completely negative. Of course, I didn't play terrible every day, but I definitely did not play at the level I feel I should have and at the level that I should have, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, after those three weeks, then I went to Loudoun, and that's where I made sense. Yeah, again, I mean, again, that's like a huge accomplishment that not a lot of players at all get to experience. So, that, you know, kudos to you. Um, but would you learn from it, though? Like, would you take out of it, right? That was a whole experience. Mm -hmm. um, a lot about playing faster. Like, it's really one touch, two touch. And you have to play the correct foot because, I mean, like, if your teammate is sprinting in one direction, trying to go to the goal, of course, and you play it behind them, then that, like, throws a whole, throws them for a loop, like it just messes up the whole plan. Also, definitely just being dominant, like the mentality. I was talking to one of my coaches, uh, Coach Barth. He was with us through the academy. He's still at the academy. Honestly, I think he's an amazing coach. Like I'm very thankful to have him in my life. And he was just telling me like, you need to adjust your mentality. And I mean, yeah, I noticed that. So. I tried to change it. I think I still need to have a better mentality and perform better, play faster and such, get my touch better. But yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're working on it, so that's good. Um, last question. What's your most memorable soccer moment in your life? It's something that you look back at and you're like, holy, I can always replay this in my mind. Uh, um, shoot, I have quite like quite a few, but I would probably say, oh, okay, either are with the academy, they were both with the academy, and I would say one of them was either when we went to a tournament in Cayman Islands, and we got runner up, unfortunately, and the team before us, like the team that Kevin Paradis was on, the academy team, the old threes. When they went and did it the year before we went, they won the whole tournament. So like, it would have been cool if we were back-to-back -back champions, but that didn't happen. And then the second one would be, uh, we went to Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah for Generation Adidas Cup. And then this was like right before Corona, or like coronavirus like hit the United States and shut everything down. But we won our first game against, I think the New York Red Bulls. And then we played our second game and we won that as well against Real Salt Lake at their home, we beat them at their home. And then the last game we played against, uh, we played against Philadelphia Union who are like our main rivals. And we were playing them for like, there was supposed to be a third GA Cup in Dallas, Texas in like June, but that was like in the middle of COVID shutdown. So that didn't end up happening. But like we played Philly Union and we went, the game ended at 2 2 and it was a tie. So we went to PK shootouts and then we ended up beating them in PK shootouts like 5 to 4. So we were going to go to Texas and like have an extra GA Cup and it was going to be like the tournament style tournament instead of just a showcase. And then uh, Corona, it ruined everything, I would say. Those are my two moments. Coronavirus, COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's crazy. But anyways, 
Um, Troy, we're at the five speed questions. You got to answer them fast. So um, they're pretty simple, OK? All right, I'll try my best. All right, let's go. So who's, who's your favorite team? My favorite team is PSG, but I don't like what's going on now. OK. Favorite player? Favorite player, Kylian Mbappe. Mbappe. What about your favorite pair of cleats? My favorite cleats, Copas, all black Copas, the Classic. original versions. Wow. What about your favorite food? Ooh, uh, probably some type of chicken. I love, I love food too much, but chicken, I would say. How, nice. And then um, last one, your favorite artist? Favorite artist, 21 Savage. What's your favorite track? Mmm, okay, that's, I don't know, there's too many. Big but at least one by 21 Savage. I don't Big know, maybe a lot. A lot? Yeah. A lot, yeah. The YouTube version is better because it's like extra at the end. Yeah. Um, all right. So, I mean, Troy, it was exciting to have you on again. Uh, the podcast. But before we go, I just want to thank you for taking the time for joining us on the One Soft Nation podcast today. No problem at all, bro. Thank you very much for having me, Kareem. And it was a great experience. I hope you keep in touch or something. Absolutely.